Now, that's going to give him a higher probability of getting a successful kiss in the future. Does that mean that he's now manipulating the woman? Of course not. It just means that now he's more in touch with proper social cues for when a woman is typically comfortable with wanting to kiss the man. Okay, So a lot of these things have a, a system behind it and have a good explanation behind it. And most guys aren't aware. We're not innately born with these skills and how to get girls. What's up guys, John Anthony here from John Anthony Lifestyle. Today I wanted to talk about an article in which I am featured in that was written by an Australian reporter called The Murky World of Pickup Artists and How They Navigate Consent. Okay, As you can imagine, a lot of guys would be reluctant to go on camera and talk about this kind of stuff, especially when reporters typically will twist your words, take stuff out of context, and just generally make you look as bad as possible, implying all sorts of things that are not true or, or heavily exaggerating. However, uh, suffice to say, I had a pleasant experience with this reporter uh, who goes by Eden Gillespie. And we talked over Zoom. I ended up missing Muay Thai practice. We had a, we had a longer conversation than intended. But I feel that she ac accurately uh, depicted what I said, which rarely happens. I've been featured in all kinds of journalist articles and slandered all over the internet. So I wanted to go through her, her article here. She mentions some other characters, including uh, Julian Blanc from RSD, RC Julian, RSD Alex, Frank Harrow, uh, Damien Deke from School of Attraction, and even talks about Neil Strauss. Okay, so uh, it's an interesting article. I guess like the, the backdrop of this, she told me is that Australia is having some issues with consent and it's like a big thing in the news and this and that. And, uh, she wanted to see how I weigh in on these things as a professional dating coach. So before we jump into this, please subscribe below. If you are not already a subscriber, press notification bell for new video alerts every single day. And if you want to master the game and get rock star level results and finally be done with having to consume uh, you know, any kind of content that's going to make you better since you'll master the game on my program, you can jump on a free 30 minute call and speak to me or one of my coaches and we'll go over how we can get you very, 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 very good at this game very fast, typically to the rate of uh, closing one to two new girls per week and putting one new rotation girl on per week. Okay. So jumping right in here, I'm just going to go through this. It may sound like a 2000s throwback, but a small catalog of pickup artists are still teaching men how to seduce women. The feed investigates how these dating coaches approach the issue of consent. Content warning. Content may be distressing to some readers. Okay. Uh, sitting inside a parked car, pickup artist Frank Harrow asked a woman walking by if she'd like to go for a drive down Sunset Strip. For those of you that watch a lot of my videos, I actually blasted the fuck out of this guy for pulling what was like an objective one or two on camera. Basically like a, a massively overweight woman. Uh, it doesn't capture someone's face at first, but records her response. She tells him, I'm scared. Frank assures woman he's sober. She can take a photo of his ID that he's from the military. I'm persistent, but I'm not thirsty, he says. Before the woman enters the car, Frank drives down the road and does an audio check for his listeners. Later, he asks her, what's your pain tolerance? Adding, I mean, These are just him trying to be cool on the camera. Let's be clear here. This guy sucks at game. He sucks at coaching. Okay, But he's one of the guys that like fucking goes balls to the wall and like, you know, embarrasses himself <laughs> and gives the industry a bad name. Anyways, don't shake on me now. Don't be nervous. Blah, 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 blah. Shaky camera footage captures their walk to her hotel room. Frank covertly places the camera down. The woman has shown him full view as he massages her toes. Yeah, now you're not supposed to fucking record inside the house. Okay, all my infield footage, we vetted it through a high-end privacy attorney. And he went through every little bit. And he said, obviously, don't record in, inside the house. And don't record in caps, anywhere where there's a reasonable expectation of privacy. In public domains, where there's not a reasonable expectation of privacy, such as doing daytime game or even nighttime game, okay, in a, in a public environment, then you're not breaking any wiretapping laws. And again, the wiretapping laws vary from state to state. It's either one party or two party consent wiretapping laws. But you can be the one party, okay, in the states that have one party wiretapping laws. And to avoid, to avoid civil damages, you can blur their face and bleep out any identifying audio information. Okay, But he was showing this girl's uh, face in plain view and also was covertly recording her indoors. Okay, A stream of comments flowing live on YouTube, shaming the one about her weight and overall appearance. Oh, here we go. He, he places the camera down 
massages her shoulders. And my daddy, your master, okay, which was a, a bit of a uh, strange thing to say, given that this was an African-American woman. Uh, anyways, Frank asked before telling the woman to touch his crotch through his pants. Okay, the video is essentially free advertising for a pickup artist, evidence of their successful so-called game. That is until the woman turns, spots the camera, and asks, is that recording? Okay, and then the interaction is one of several infield videos posted on the YouTube channel under Frank's name that has over 15K subscribers. Frank did not respond to several requests by the feed because he's a huge pussy for comment, nor confirm the account is operated by him directly, which, why wouldn't it be? One blurry video on the channel shows an unidentified man attempting to touch a woman's vagina while inside a nightclub. Okay, which, which, you know, obviously that's off color. The feed is unable to confirm whether Frank is the man in the video, but the caption video reads, in today's video, I'll show you how, how quickly you can sexualize immediately once engaging conversation using nonverbals. This is a much watched video. Here we have Frank in his kitchen, looking like a fucking dweeb. Uh, before touching the woman, the man in the video wiggles two fingers at what appears to be the person filming. When the woman whose face is censored appears to pull away, the man kisses her and pulls her close. He tells her to quote unquote shut the fuck up before she screams and he forcibly kisses her again. Yeah. That's what I mean. You, you have, you, it just takes a few bad apples to go act like a fucking retard clown. And you'll see in the end of the article how she gives me credit. But basically, I say, yeah, all this stuff fucking bothers me because I'm a legitimate coach who actually has a real system that actually gets guys very good. And then you have a bunch of fucking clowns uh, poisoning the, the industry, okay? Most of the fucking industry is clowns, to be, to be fair. Uh, infield videos send myriad harmful messages about consent, not least by suggesting it's acceptable for men to record women without their knowledge or consent. Um, also, share these men. Okay. Now, also, let's be clear. Um... It is legal, legal, L-E-G-A-L, to record someone without their consent in public in a one-party consent wiretapping law or state, okay? As I said before, like for, in New York, for instance, one-party consent, okay? So you can record someone in public as long as there's not a reasonable expectation of privacy. That's how the laws read, okay? So that is perfectly acceptable, okay? And then, uh, you know, when you share these videos, the woman's identity is kept completely anonymous. There's nothing about her appearance or anything she says on camera that could be used against her. But for those of you that are, that are watching, please uh, stick with me because we're going to get to my part. And that part's really fun and exciting. It's coming a couple, a couple people later. Um, so stick around for that. Okay, but uh, here, we, here we have clear parallels can be found here to other forms of image-based harassment abuse such as upskirting or revenge porn no that's not at all the same thing okay here's this is where this is where they start this is exactly what what typical feminists and you know people that are just trying to make people look bad do no uh filming a public pickup okay in a, in a public environment with a one-party consent wiretapping law is not the same thing as upskirting and revenge porn okay that's like there was a, a journalist that wrote an article about me Oh, here's three guys to post on RC Nation. Two of them shot up schools and killed themselves. Here's a third guy that posts on the same forum. These these three people are the same, okay? And I, and I was falsely accused of a crime back in 2013, which she covers here. And they're like, well, this person was arrested and allegedly committed a crime, but I that never went to trial and I was never convicted, okay? But the, the journalist had a fun time putting me, lumping me in with two school shooters who post on RC Nation. So if you took two pedophiles and then someone that was like charged with maybe like attempted uh you know larceny like stealing something from a store or something like that and then was found to be innocent later you know, like these three people posted on bodybuilding.com and the articles about pedophiles okay and it, it's it's clear slander okay i i looked into doing a case against her and they just be very careful about putting alleged and all the stupid shit anyways moving right along History of pickup artist stuff. Where did they come from? As the importance of consent and respectful relationships dominates Australian headlines, pickup artistry, while small and ruptured, drudges on. According to doc Dr. O'Neill's book, Seduction, Men, Masculinity, and, and Mediated Intimacy, the industry dates back to the 1900s, but was seared into the public consciousness in the early 2000s with the publication of Neil Strauss's bestseller, The Game. That's how a lot of us found out about this community. That's how I found out about it personally. Strauss discussed the techniques the seduction industry uses to manipulate and coerce women, such as the neg which involves discreetly undermining a woman's self-esteem by paying her a backhanded compliment. Now also, let's be clear, and she captures this quote later in the when she's talking about me, all men have a strategy. Most strategies are just bad. Okay, So it doesn't need to be framed as manipulation and coercion. There's just better ways to, to text. There's better ways to run your interactions. 
there's better ways to run your dates and so on and so forth. So it doesn't need to be this whole manipulative thing, okay? Um, Strauss, let's see, uh, okay, so which involves screw the undermining one's self-esteem by paying her back any compliment. The neg and other concepts like last minute resistance are still referred, re referenced by a small catalog of pickup artists. Last minute resistance refers to the idea that some women resist sex because they are driven by the fear of slut shaming, according to Dr. O'Neill. Pickup artists position themselves as being able to overcome this using a series of techniques, she said. Um, Dr. O'Neill's book paints a picture of pickup artists and their clients as ordinary men who have have bought into a culture that believes women can be gamed, persuaded, or at its worst, coerced into sex. Okay, she believes the suction industry presents a grossly simplistic view of female psychology. The suction industry traffics in the idea that it has deciphered what women want and that its adherents can instruct men on in how to give this to women. Okay? In reality, of course, there is no single answer to the question of what women want. Indeed, what any of us want in terms of sex and intimacy is often opaque, even to ourselves. And now here we jump into Julian, and then I'm featured after, okay? So, so bear with me. We're going to Julian's bullshit, and then in RSD's bullshit, and then we're going to me, okay? As the seduction industry exploded, companies like Real Social Dynamics profited from its growth, but were also successful in triggering, triggering international outrage. In 2014, Swiss-born RSD coach Julian Blanc was kicked out of Australia after protests against his advocacy for the use of physical force to pick up women, okay? Julian had promoted choking women, grabbing their heads, and pushing them towards his groin, and advising his followers on how to destroy a woman's bitch shield. Okay, then Immigration Minister Scott Morrison said, Julian, this guy wasn't pushing forward political ideas. He was putting a view that was derogatory to women. And that's just something that our values abhor in this country. Julian later apologized like a huge pussy when he melted down on CNN to anyone that I've offended in any way. Blah, blah, blah. This was never my intention. I just want to put it out there. He's a total fucking pussy. He melted on camera. Everyone saw his true colors. And then he scurried off into the self-help world with his tail between his legs, okay, dressing in outfits like this, wearing, you know, psych you know, basically just like flashy colors and absolutely ridiculous circus clown clothing, okay, while, while being uh, ex extremely exaggeratory, over charismatic to the point of annoyance, okay, and then marrying a, a busted chick, as we saw in, in my other video about the, the busted girlfriends. Um, but yeah, Julian was putting up like abuse charts of women and saying might as well be a checklist, okay, on, on Instagram and, and other fucking totally retarded things. Okay, again, giving a bad name to the industry, giving a bad name to the game in general. Okay, now here we go. Pick up artists. And by the way, I made a spoof of Julian's entire uh, CNN response that's scripted to the letter with all the exact dialogue that went on during that. Me and my old friend Sonny Arvado made that where I played Julian, he played Chris Como, and we'll link that. Uh, I'll show that at the end, but we'll link that um, in the description as well. Okay, pick up artist day. Here we go. This is me, John Mulvihill. I think she actually makes me look cool. Okay, she she meant she goes with my false arrest, but she doesn't paint it in, in a bad light because um, I have a full defense for it. But anyways, uh, she shows me a bunch of hot chicks. She shows my lay count graph, so shows me making out with chicks. These other guys are painted out to be fucking weirdos so far. Now, pick up artist today, John Mulvihill, aka John Anthony Lifestyle, a former. Dating coach assistant for the company Real Social Dynamics, which was only for a very short-lived three months in 2012, markets himself as having slept with over a thousand women. Everyone's always like, "What's your obsession with late count?" It's not necessarily an obsession. It's important to let people be aware of the real results, the results that I've achieved in this game. Okay, when you want to learn poker, when you want to learn chess or any skill game, you want to learn from the top of the top, from the best people who have demonstrated their ability to master that game and get the result that you are looking for as a customer. Okay rather than just making a bunch of claims and never showing anything like the rest of the dating coaches. And then surprise, surprise, you take their program and, oh, wait, it's not working. Okay, well, why, oh, do the math on that. Um, and I can listen to any one of them for five minutes and realize they're totally full of shit, okay? But uh, the 37-year-old told the feed, yeah, and people usually guess I'm like 27 to 32, but I do a bunch of aggressive anti-aging therapies and uh, treatments. Anyways, uh, he throws his late count number around just to show that I have a lot of experience and a lot of success in terms of getting the result, which is, you know, getting with a new attractive woman. Yeah, that's nothing wrong with that, right? If you wanted to learn sales, would you want to learn from a rookie that, that's barely closed any deals? Or do you want to learn from a guy that's closed a thousand deals? Okay, it's, yeah, the answer is obvious. In his YouTube videos, John often describes women in terms of their perceived attractiveness, rating them as tens or fives, a 10 being the most attractive and a five being mildly attractive. And she was like, do you uh, have any 
uh, uh, regrets for calling women by a number. And I said, no, that's not meant to be misogynistic. It's not meant to be derogatory. It's not meant to objectify women at all. All it's doing is using a shorthand uh, reference to their physical attraction, which is fairly objectively agreed upon because men have biological attraction circuitry. Okay, we are we're wired to respond to hip to waist ratios and, and supple breasts and you know symmetry and, and young looking faces. You know, the, the, the girls in their lower twenties typically are more attractive than women in their forties. Okay, that those are facts. So no, I do not have any uh, regrets for referring to women. That doesn't mean that's all they are, it's just their physical attractiveness, not by any means. Okay. And I was clear with her about that. And okay, so here we go. Uh, here we are I'm with some with some hot chicks. Uh, John told the feed he detests RSD, which is true, and claims they used to encourage literally walking up to girls and calling them a whore or a dog as an opener. Yes, Julian was was pushing that. And I said that's the kind of stuff that got them banned from entire continents. Yeah, I've never been banned from any country or continent, whereas a lot of the RSD instructors are banned from multiple continents. And it, it fucking made national news and, and made the pick apart industry look bad. Austin retard Summers fucking blew up Colombia. Bradicus blew up Mexico. There's some fucking retards in the UK that, that blew up that whole area. Okay. And, and the fucking retards in Toronto blowing up Eaton Center. Okay. And this is who's to blame. Okay. In my view, I think RSD in, in a lot of these cases because they're encouraging guys to go act like full on jackasses. And, and disrupt normal states of affairs in the world and draw a whole lot of unwanted attention, in what world would it be acceptable or cool or even a good game strategy to walk up to a woman and call her a whore or a dog? Okay, that They were just getting a, a, a power trip off sending droves of impressionable young men to go do absolutely ridiculous circus antics and you know basically need much more help, which equates to buying more of their products and services. Okay, and I said that kind of behavior was getting guys slapped and punched. John claims he's now living in Brazil with his girlfriend, actually with multiple girls, and that he's coaching men for over a decade. Yes, I started coaching this in 2011. We are now coming up on, uh, we're, we're halfway through 2021 now. He said he's helped countless guys gain confidence and get better skills and deal with and navigate social situations, And then she, which is true, right? And then she said, well, do you have sisters? Yes, I do. Uh, do they like your job? And I said, no, we, of course, like, a, you know, cause it's misinterpreted. So I said, no, my sister's not a fan of my profession. I have two sisters and they hate this because they think you're just trying to manipulate people. Okay. And here's my response. And this is a very important point. Every guy has a strategy. Let me repeat that. Every guy has a strategy. When a man is swiping on Tinder. He has some strategy. When a man is texting, he has some strategy. When a man's on a date, he has some strategy. If he walks up to a stranger in public, whether it be a bar or, or on the street, he has a strategy. When he's on a date, he has a strategy. When the girl's back to his house, he has a strategy. When he's trying to keep the girl around, he has a strategy. When he's trying to set up his profile, he has a strategy and on and on. Okay. Here's the thing. Most people's strategies are just very fucking bad. Okay. So just because I'm giving guys a good strategy doesn't mean it's necessarily manipulation. Okay, um, that th don't don't let those two things be confused. Let's be clear. Okay, systematically making more of the right moves and the wrong moves. I mean, just like a guy's simple introspection. Say you take an average guy; he knows nothing about the community. He can go out and he can do something, and he goes to kiss the girl, and she turns away. Okay, and then he thinks to himself, "Hmm." Maybe I came on too strong. Next time I'm going to wait a little bit until she's laughing and smiling more, okay, before I go to try to kiss her. Now that's going to give him a higher probability of getting a successful kiss in the future. Does that mean that he's now manipulating the woman? Of course not. It just means that now he's more in touch with proper social cues for when a woman is typically comfortable with wanting to kiss the man, okay? So a lot of these things have a, a system behind it and have a good explanation behind it. And most guys just aren't aware. We're not innately born with these skills and how to get girls and ho the Hollywood narratives and the narratives from our fucking mothers are not accurate. They're, they're Disney fairy tales. That's not how things work in real life. And so I provide that I provide guys with the real strategies to get 
the real extra results so that their dates go better, so that they get more dates, so that they have more girls interested in them, so that they keep more girls around and so on and so forth, okay? Here I am kissing some lovely young ladies. And this was fucking eight years ago, uh, back around like 150 count. Anyways, John said he tells his clients to not be overly pushy and just enjoy the time of the girl and let things unfold naturally. Of course, why wouldn't you, right? I, and guys, because guys on my mentorship sometimes, on my mentorship program, they'll say, and by the way, if you have interest in that, jump on a free 30 minute call, link in the description. Uh, let's see. So guys sometimes will say, hey, I like this girl didn't want to have sex on the first date. I say, don't make the success of the date, like the measure of success of the date, whether or not you fucked the girl. Okay. Look at it. Did you enjoy the time with this girl? Did you have chemistry with this girl? Do you want to see this girl again? If so, who really cares if you fucked the girl or not? Yes, you, you want to fuck the girl and sex is fun, but who cares if it takes another couple dates or another few dates? Who cares? Okay. If, if that's going to still be an enjoyable time with the girl and you're going to have like an, a nice thing for months, why do you give a fuck? And I know, I know coaches that say, oh, if she won't fuck you on the first date, never see her again, right? And I think that's ridiculous. And there's a bunch of guys that embody those mindsets and I actively teach against that. That's not like a sappy thing. It's just that some of the best girls I've ever met in the game didn't close on the first date. The girl on my, uh, on my channel, that's the main girl I'm seeing in Brazil, Liz, she, we didn't have sex on the first date, okay? So uh, anyways, if a woman says, I don't want to continue, then you should stop immediately. Yes, of course. Okay, now, research, when, now, while researching the article, the feed came across several articles that included serious allegations about John's past. Now, I have a whole video devoted to this on my channel, my arrest response video. It's almost two hours long, where I systematically deconstruct the charges. I show all the evidence on my side, which includes is very lengthy, okay, which is why the case didn't go to trial, and which why there was no convictions on any of the charges. Okay, but the feminists had a field day with this and tried to imply that I had like a, a rape situation. Okay, and let me be clear, I've never been accused or charged with rape, and this particular arrest in 2013 had nothing to do, there was no sex in the case, had nothing to do with, with any kind of rape situation, or any alleged rape situation, which people always get wrong, because feminist journalists painted it such, okay, but there was no sex in this case, and thus no rape charge or allegation, okay. Um, so... The Daily Beast alleges that according to an arrest report, while John was working as an assistant for RST instructors in 2013, he walked a woman to his car. According to the arrest report, John pulled the woman into his car. Now here, now I'll go into my defense in a second. Uh, locked the doors, this is what she's alleging, so she couldn't escape and tossed away her phone so she couldn't text her friends. That's complete BS. What happened is the girl was feeling bad about cheating on her boyfriend. She's like, oh my God, my friends are gonna judge me. She was from the Bible Belt. In Oklahoma, and she's like, my my friends are going to judge me. God is going to judge me. My father is going to disown me. So what she did was a little convenient thing to throw me under the bus and act like, oh, I was I didn't want to be a party to this. Okay, going to his car to hook up, uh, just so she could save her image to her friends, just so she could save her image to God and to her father. Okay, at the, at the expense of uh, throwing a monkey wrench into my life when I did absolutely nothing wrong. Okay. So, no, the doors were not fucking locked. I didn't pu pull her into my car and, and, and this whole thing of keeping her in my car and does it, you know, moving her. That's all bullshit, okay? And that's, the judge laughed and said, this is one of the most ridiculous cases I've seen in my whole career as a judge, okay? And, and rightfully so. This is a ridiculous, it was a ridiculous thing. I can't even believe they were able to put charges on over that. Uh, this is false. She didn't try to leave at all, okay? Now, here they show my late, late, <laughs> my late count chart which shows exponential progression, progressing from when I lost my virginity over 15 to 20 years of, of getting up into the over a thousand range. My two products, Occam's Razor and Leads Machine. Uh, this is ultimateseductionsystem.com. This is sexleadmachine.com. Okay, the woman claimed John pulled down his pants and told her to watch the masturbate while he groped her breasts and kissed her. She also alleged when her friends found out they banged in the car when she got out. No, that's total BS. She was participating completely on her own. And she happened to want to throw me under the bus just so she could save face and not feel look like a total piece of shit since she had a boyfriend that she was cheating on, okay? According to court documents, John was charged with disorderly conduct, coercion, two counts of open or gross lewdness. John was never convicted. Yeah, let's make that very clear. I was never convicted, and it didn't even go to trial, okay? I made a no-contest plea, which doesn't admit any guilt whatsoever for disorderly conduct, which is the lowest level misdemeanor, okay? It's the same thing as, like, being drunk in public, and you get... You get a, a, a misdemeanor for that if the cop arrests you. And I had to pay fines, undergo impulse control, impulse control training. This is back in 2013 this happened, okay? 
and stay out of the Vegas Strip for a year. Okay, and, and she notes here, a no contest plea means you accept punishment for the crimes you have been charged with, but do not admit guilt. Okay, so here, here I am with more hot chicks. It's funny because in the article, there's <laughs> these other guys aren't with, with any hot chicks. They're never showing any receipts, even though they have thousands. When asked about the allegations, John sent the feed a pre-recorded two-hour PowerPoint presentation in which he attempted to debunk the woman's claims. I do a very good job of debunking the woman's claims, and we will uh, put a link to that in the description if you want to see the arrest response. In the video, John compared the situation to what they tried to do to Mike Tyson and said feminist assholes are gunning us down as men. Okay, my, Mike Tyson, I watched a documentary on Mike Tyson's rape conviction. Okay, now keep in mind, I've never been charged or, or even accused of rape, ever. Okay, but this was a similar situation where a, man, where a woman is alleging something against someone and it, and it has shaky as fuck uh, information behind it. But Mike Tyson actually was convicted of rape and served time over it. And I watched a documentary on it. It's like 99.9% .9 he didn't do it. It even came out after the fact, after he was convicted, that his accuser had falsely accused someone in the past. Okay? Isn't that wonderful? And they were even going to let him out early if he admitted guilt, and he was like, no, I didn't fucking do it. Okay? Which he's, he stood by his whole way through. And I personally believe him, based on all the evidence that was presented. Okay? However, it's easy to sway a, a jury of dumb, emotionally impressionable people. Um, all right, so... John is not the only former RSD employee that continues to work in the dating field. Now, here we have RSD Alex, who's now Alex from the Four Week Natural. I made a video for that. We'll put the thumbnail up for that, where I, I put RSD Alex exposed. Um, so moving right along, Queenslander, he's from Australia. Alex was studying psychology at university when he claims he was recruited to be a coach at RSD in 2007. He said he quit the company in 2012 because he didn't like the direction it was going in. It was kind of a pyramid scheme. Okay, here you have from a former employee. It was kind of a pyramid scheme, to be honest, Alex told the feed. Alex also said in a video that he has now privated, okay, that, uh, RS, that, that Tyler is an illegal immigrant in the United States and, and has a questionable tax situation, okay? And also, <laughs> and also somebody call ICE, please. Uh, and also, he notes that uh, he said that it, it got... He said this should be about helping guys and not about trying to extract as much money as possible, which I made that point a hundred times over in many videos. Okay, RSD is a steaming pile of shit. Okay, but he said it's a pyramid scheme. We would work with three guys at a time on a weekend in Sydney. RSD would charge each of those guys 3K. I'd get 22% net earnings. That was the model. Alex now runs a four week program. I was in all these pictures with hot girls. He's just like wearing like little, like, you know, dorky child hat, dorky kid hats. And, and he, by the way, he's living out of a fucking uh, van or mobile home, uh, heavily in debt, massively depressed. Has tried to kill himself multiple times. I cover all this in my RST Alex Exposed video, which we'll we'll put the thumbnail up to in the link in the description. But he says uh, how to overcome helplessness, hopelessness, and disorientation in the social and dating game. The advice I give guys is that if you realize you're equal to so many other guys and you're able to overcome issues about having an ego or being socially af afraid, people will reciprocate your social contribution. Okay, in a video post on Alex's YouTube channel, he claims your theatricism and manipulation can trigger consent. Yeah, that's a, ni a nice thing to say, Alex. When asked about this quote, Alex told the feed, manipulation is not necessarily a bad thing. Yeah, even adding insult to injury here. It's not the kind of thing you, you, you should say to a feminist re or, or a, a reporter, obviously, if this is his, his actual view. Anyways, uh, manipulation is not necessarily a bad thing. Parents manipulate their children into believing Santa Claus is real to create a more exciting situation for the children. In another video, Alex discussed how to balance out the use of negs, negative expressions, to seduce women. Turning your back to her, shushing her, these are negative things. It's so beautiful when you do these physicality negs, Alex said. In the video, Alex claims negative expressions can be over the top and theatrical like telling a woman you're a trophy wife bitch. Okay, here's more of the, the nice fancy one-liners from the RST camp. Oh, you're a trophy wife bitch. Yeah. Oh, whore bitch, dog. Come here, come to that. You know, it's cringe. Cringe verbals. Thank you, RST, for introducing cringe verbals and, and pushing them on a massive scale across the whole community so that I get to unwire each of those and each guy I work with one by one. So it's a great time for everyone. I also use the phrase, this is quoted by Alex, you never told me to stop, he said in the video. When asked about this, he said he was referring to a woman he was dating at the time. In this relationship, I'd playfully call her the trophy wife, which is a really positive over-the-top expression, and then would be like, oh, now you're being a bitch, and she would say the same to me. The point is the point that I was making is that if you're very generous with your positive statements, then you can playfully use negative expressions. Alex said with his clients, the question of consent doesn't come up often, adding if there is a doubt in terms of consent, there is no doubt. Okay, moving away from the pickup industry. Damien Deke, 
Okay, the last one they're going to cover, and then they're going to go. In, she goes into some closing things that I said again. Uh, he runs School of Attraction in Sydney. As a dating coach, he said he applies his background in men's work to relationships rather than a pick apart his philosophy to attract women. This guy's always seemed like a massive dork. His girlfriend is ugly. I'm going to do a, a exposed video on him. I've got a bunch of hilarious shit that I'm going to talk about related to this idiot. Damien told the feed he believes manipulative strategies endorsed by some pickup artists target women with the lowest self esteem. White knighting over here. These mentalities have set me the most because it hurts everyone. It puts women on edge, it makes women not trust men, and it hurts the men themselves as well. Damien believes there's a growing undercurrent of angry men who are resentful towards women. Thank you, the thank you, Red Pill community. Thank you, Rolo Dweeb Tomasi. Okay, he said these men need attention because they are forming their own groups online and adopting unhealthy philosophies about women. Yes, enter black pill, enter red pill. Enter retard pill. Enter retard Richard Cooper. Okay. What most women in society in general sees are overly aggressive, assertive men out there who are making women feel unsafe. And that's a problem that needs to be dealt with. But what society doesn't realize is there's an equally larger volume of men who are feeling very underrepresented and very unsupported. As for John... Okay, and then she's going back into me. As for John, he believes some men take it too far. Yes. A small sub... This is a quote by me. A small subset of guys take this stuff to a perverted sense where they're calling girls dogs or whores, or in some cases, guys were posting sex acts online. I agree that the public image, at the very least, it looks very, very strange. And that really bothers me because I have a real system that actually helps guys. Okay, and then you hear fucking loser Frank Harrow has contacted several times for comment, did not get a response, probably too busy being a pussy or filming infield of pulling ones. Okay. So... That's that. I mean, you know, the arrest thing, I'm not shameful of that. I have nothing to hide. There was no trial and no conviction. And it was a f total fucking load of horseshit. And I, have a, I have a close to a two-hour response video on it. Overall, as I said, I feel like she represented me fairly. I do like that all these other dweebs were shown by themselves, whereas I was shown with hot chicks. She shows my lay count progression. More hot chicks, kissing them, and more hot chicks, right? And she, she has me as the face of modern uh, pickup artist today which you know besides me and playing with fire there aren't really any quality channels on seduction and pickup artist uh strategy and tactics out there everyone wants to talk about woo, -woo nonsense and yes I, I don't include todd v either because what he's done is massively overcomplicate the game and he's been involved with a six a soft six who he has a baby with for over five years and is a disgrace to the community okay he also pushed rsd trash for 10 years and denounced it later and I caught him lying about his lay count and other various things. And his technical game is a fucking total nightmare. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to actually master the game and get very, 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 very good very quickly, jump on that free 30-minute call with the link in the description. And please subscribe below if you haven't already. Press the notification bell. I hope this was fun. And I will see you guys on some more videos coming up soon. Thank you so much. Take care, guys. Talk to you soon. Some do it for the income, but we do it for the outcome Some of us are active while others just let their mouth run No doubt, son, this is not just about fun We will not be outdone by these cowards who shout scum